We're back, and we are continuing a really important conversation with Congressman Michael Cloud. He represents the people of the 27th District of Texas. Uh, he is a rising star, I think it's fair to say, as a constitutional conservative in the Republican caucus in the House of Representatives. And we've just been talking with him about one of his um, preoccupations, understandably, namely border insecurity and the growing danger that it represents to all of our um, people and uh, communities, uh, whether they're in proximity to the border, as his uh, constituency is, or elsewhere in this country. Um, Congressman, I wanted to turn to another topic. You're a member, as I mentioned, of the Agriculture Committee in the mm -hmm. House of Representatives. And there is growing reason to believe that um, policies of our own government, to some extent, and developments elsewhere in the world natural phenomenon like droughts, um, wars in places like Ukraine, and um, the supply chain problems uh, with fertilizers and amino acids, and in some cases just food itself, is giving rise to a, a real danger of food insecurity, even here in the United States, a country right renowned for its uh, productive agricultural sector. Uh, talk about mm -hmm. how you see that coming challenge. We kind of have a number of issues from bad policies here at home to geopolitical things that we see happening on the world stage that are leading us really to a pivot point. Uh, and, and right now already, you know, when families go to the grocery stores, they notice less of a, less choices. Uh, many shelves are, are empty, food prices are right. astronomically high. A lot of that you can trace back to broken supply chains. You can also look at our, our bad energy policies here. A number of the products that uh, farmers and farmers and ranchers, well, farmers most recently when they're growing food use, uh, you look at high prices of fertilizer that have gone up. Uh, you look at pesticides that are hard to find right now. Both of those are derivatives from, from energy here in, in the United States. Uh, we're having to get much of the fertilizer historically comes from Russia. So, of course, that's uh, a deal right now. And then you have a number of restrictions being placed on the oil and gas industry here in the United States when we should be leading the world in all of these practices. A uh, number of uh, our committee... Could, could I just ask you, how does the energy piece fit in? Are you talking about transportation costs or are you talking about production of fertilizer using, uh, you know, sure, natural yeah. gas? Sure, yeah. So, so you have the input costs are going up when you have fuel costs going up for transportation. You have the byproducts uh, of fertilizers, uh, of pesticides, of some of the chemicals that, that, you, that are used. And so if you think about the return, uh, Americans are best in the world at having the least inputs and the highest yields. Um, and so one of the ways that happens is because of the fertilizer technology, the pesticide technology. And so if you don't have the fertilizers and pesticides, you have lower yields, which means there's less food to go around. Uh, plus right. the high cost of transportation just, you know, puts makes it very difficult for American families when food prices start going up. Add to that, you know, what we're seeing in the geopolitical sphere where you have a uh, major wheat producer in essence, taken off the market. Uh, and right. then between Russia and Ukraine, I think they're like something like 13% of the vegetable oil production in the world too. And so that's uh, in, in question at the moment. And so when we look ahead, you know, a year from now, uh, in the United States, uh, you know, we could expect higher food prices. We'll probably be able to outbid the rest of the world uh, when it comes to that, but extremely high prices. But in some of these third world and, and poorer countries, they're going to be looking at food shortages, which, yeah. you know, what that begins to do politically, uh, it's going to be very interesting to watch. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned supply chains. Uh, one other facet of this, I think, is that China has been hoarding immense mm -hmm. amount of uh, corn and, and wheat and uh, perhaps other foodstuffs as well. And that, that may have a bearing on all of this. Um, in addition, there's drought. Um, I was unaware of how severe it was in the uh, southwestern part of the United States until I right. heard the other day that uh, the Hoover Dam, uh, like the reservoir behind it, is now sufficiently low that an intake uh, has been exposed. And that means that they have to curb the 
flow of the water beyond. And mm. that in turn is going to impact, I, I'm told something like 25 million Americans. I imagine some in the agricultural sector as well as uh, consumers. Um, yeah. Does that factor into this equation as well? And are, in your estimation, are we looking not just at food being less, uh, shall we say, uh, abundant, but um, actual famine in parts of the country? I'll say this, you know, I, I obviously stay in regular communication with our ag community and, you know, made a number of calls to farmers across our district in the last week and met with a, a, a number of them yesterday. And, you know, I, I, as we're looking to the farm bill and different po policies and things that we're preparing in the ag community, I would ask them, you know, what, what, what's your biggest need right now? Every one of them, rain, you know, we need rain right now. Um, and so right now, if we, if we were able to get a few more inches of rain. Uh, some crops could be saved, but right now they're looking at, many of them are looking at a loss of their crop for the season if they're not able, if we're not able to get rain soon. So certainly it's a time for us to be praying for rain uh, as well on this National Day yeah, of Prayer. Well, so. I'm big on prayer, that's for sure. <laughs> um, Congressman, let me ask you about one other item that I know is uh, a passion of yours. I mentioned that you're a constitutional conservative. It's something I admire about you. Fiscal irresponsibility mm -hmm. is now rife in this administration. Um, what the cumulative impact of that is going to be is, is hard to calculate. Mm -hmm. uh, one facet of it that worries me greatly, and I imagine does you as well, is the possibility that um, as we've been simply printing money to a fairly well, we're really jeopardizing the dollar's reserve currency status, and the implications exactly. of that are yes. uh, incalculable. Walk us through your concerns in these scores, if you would. Yeah, we have had the privilege of being the world reserve currency, you know, really since World War II, but we have not been acting like the world reserve currency. Uh, we've been very right. irresponsible, and especially in the last year or two, the trillions and trillions of dollars that have just... Uh, been printed, uh, you know, for projects. Uh, it, it's just the American yeah, Rescue 30, Plan, for example. Yeah, yeah we're looking at thirty trillion uh, dollars in debt and and no plan to get back to fiscal responsibility at the moment. Already, you you have uh, Saudi Arabia uh, making an agreement to to purchase uh, or to deal with China using the Chinese currency. Uh, India is considering the same sort of thing, and so we're. You know, if we would lose our position as a world reserve currency, uh, it, it would be unprecedented uh, and it would be really detrimental to er everything that we're trying to get done for our families Absolutely. as as well as our place in the world. And and yeah. if you look at it in the context of history, you know, most great nations in history crumble from within uh, and, and we have to really put in these right policies that will bring us back from the brink uh, and, right. and really reverse course on a lot of these issues when it comes to what we're doing. Well, I, I know that you're taking a leading role in that with uh, Senator Mike Lee and other uh, Republicans in the House and Senate, and I commend you for doing so. I, I was struck by this data point in an article about your work uh, in which uh, they talked about the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco estimating that the cost the actual cost, Biden had said it wasn't going to cost mm -hmm. us anything for this American rescue plan, mm -hmm. has been a 3% addition to mm -hmm. the inflation rate, which is yeah. just absolutely stunning. And uh, Wait, which is a tax. The knock on effect American. is that we lose yeah. the dollar's reserve currency status. Uh, as you said, the, the, the damage will right. be unimaginable. Congressman Mike Cloud, thank you for your time today, sir, for your leadership in the House of Representatives and uh, in the country more generally. We look forward, I hope, to future visits with you to get into more of these issues in greater detail and also your recommendations for what we do about each of them. It's, uh, it's vital that the public both be aware of the problem and appreciate people like yourself who are trying to do something about it. So Godspeed and all that work and come back to us again soon if you would, sir. Next up, we'll speak with Jeff Nyquist. We'll be talking about China's weapon of choice, biological warfare. Straight ahead.